HubSpot is not just another CRM software for managing contacts and sales. HubSpot incorporates many essential features into their CRM to improve systems, enhance business growth and team productivity. One essential feature or complementary feature is task management. This eliminates the need to use another task management platform alongside HubSpot. Not only this, you can access and use tasks completely for free within HubSpot's free CRM. Hey guys, Stuart here. Welcome along to another small business tutorial. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to use the task management feature inside HubSpot's CRM so that you can better organize and streamline your personal and business related activities. No more pen and paper or using multiple tools to manage all your dynamic day to day tasks. Okay, so before we go ahead and launch into this tutorial, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel, and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge, and tools to help your small business thrive online. And with that happy note out of the way, let's go ahead and get you up and running with task management inside HubSpot. <music> Okay, so most likely you already have a free or paid HubSpot CRM account already set up and ready to go. If you're completely new to HubSpot and you're yet to sign up and sign into your HubSpot account, then simply head over to your browser and type in HubSpot.com or feel free to click the link in our description below this video and that's going to take you here. Okay, so again, for those that don't have an account, go ahead and get started with HubSpot's free CRM. And those that already have an account, what we'll do is meet you inside HubSpot. Okay, so once you've arrived inside your HubSpot account, what we want to do is navigate up to Sales and Locate Tasks. Simply come down, click on Tasks. Now, if this is your first time being exposed to HubSpot, your first time navigating through HubSpot, then what you want to do is connect your calendar, either Google or Outlook, to HubSpot. And that's going to allow you to add your tasks to your calendar. Now, again, if you're completely new, I do suggest you watch this beginner's tutorial, which I'll link up above and down below in the description, that will help you set up your HubSpot CRM account. This is going to help you set up your preferences and your settings. So go ahead and check out that tutorial if you like. Okay, so up above, first we have Manage Queues. This allows us to essentially group, filter, and share our tasks. And we'll talk more about this soon. You can also import tasks, and you can create tasks over here. If we navigate down, these are our different views. We can see all our tasks, due today, overdue, upcoming. We can also add an additional view and we can manage views here. So for example, if you logged into your HubSpot account and you wanted to view all the tasks today that are important for you to complete today, then what you would do is navigate over to due today. Then we also have more filters down here and you can also save specific views. Okay, so what we're going to do first is create a task. Think about a specific activity that you need to follow up on, that you need to execute in relation to your CRM. So in relation to your contacts, your leads, companies or marketing activities that you need to engage in. Simply navigate up to create task, then go ahead and add a title for your task. I'm going to add JJK Limited Onboarding. This is just an example company. And this task is about onboarding this particular client. I can come down to type and we can select either email, call or to do. Now remember, I'm using HubSpot's free plan. However, the free CRM, the free plan is more than sufficient enough for small teams to get started with creating and managing tasks. Then what we can do is navigate over to priority. This is going to be medium priority. Then below that we have associate with records. And here I can associate the task with companies, contacts, deals, and tickets. And I can select multiple. So this specific task, JK Limited Onboarding, is associated with the company, JK Limited. So I'm going to go ahead and locate JK Limited. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and select this company and then navigate down to contacts. And again, I'm going to search for the specific contact that this task is associated to. And again, this contact is a sample contact. Then I'm going to click out of this. 
And as you can see, this task is associated with two records, this company and this contact. Then you can assign this task to a individual that is part of your account, a team member. So this task is associated to me. Then we can navigate down to queue. Now we don't have any queues at the moment, but what I can do is navigate down and click on create a new queue. And this queue could be called onboarding. So all tasks that are associated to onboarding will be added to this queue, this grouping. And then I'm gonna hit save and then navigate down to due date. Now this is where I can select the due date. I can navigate down and select any of these pre-made options or I can come down and click on custom date and then select the date and then the time over here. So the onboarding for this client is 9 a.m on the 17th of February. Then we can navigate down to reminder and we can add a reminder. I'm gonna navigate down and click on one hour before and we can also go over to settings and customize our reminders and the ways that you get notified. Then we can navigate down and add notes if we like and we also have formatting options down here. Then below we can go ahead and create this new task or we can go ahead and create and then add another task if we like. I'm gonna go ahead and simply click create task for now. And as you can see, success JJK Limited onboarding was created. Now I can navigate over to upcoming and under this view type upcoming, I can navigate down and I can view the task that I just created. I can also navigate across and click on edit and I can edit the task details over on the right hand side. Now, if this task has been complete, all I would do is navigate over to status and click this tick icon over here. I can also see the history of this task. Now, if I select this task, I have a few other options. Mark as complete, edit, delete, and change queue. So group this task into another queue. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is unselect this task. And if we had multiple tasks within this view, I can go ahead and group select all these tasks. Now, if I navigate up to add view, what I can do is click here and navigate down and select a new view type. I can also create a new view. And here I can name the custom view and I can also choose the sharing options. At the moment, private is selected only with me. I can choose specific users or teams or share this with everyone. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of that. Then we can also navigate over to manage views and you can see the different view types. These are the standard default views we have created by me and then created by others. We can also navigate over and click on options under each view and we can rename, delete, clone, and manage sharing. However, these are only available for the custom views that you created. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is navigate back and then navigate over to more filters. And when you start creating many tasks, you wanna be able to categorize those tasks. So for example, we can edit the filter. So at the moment it's showing task status is none of completed and assigned to me and then due date is greater than or equal to this date here. We can also click and and add an additional filter if we like. Okay, so I'm gonna exit out of that. We can also then navigate over to save view. So once you've created a custom view, for example, with all the different filters, you can go ahead and save that view. So you can easily navigate back over to that view that you created. We can also edit columns if we click here. And this is where we can manage the information that's displayed in our columns. So for example, we can navigate over to task properties and deselect or select the properties that we wanna add into our columns. Simply select the properties then come down and click on apply. What I'm gonna do is navigate up and exit out of this. And again, that's going to change your column down here, the different fields down here. Again, over on the right hand side, we have insights. This is where you can see the performance of the different activities, the tasks that you've completed, as well as deals. If we keep activities selected down here, you can see the number of calls that you've engaged in this week, meetings completed this week, and more activity down here. So this is your performance in terms of task completion. Next to insights, we have feed, this is where you can see activity within your account. For example, if we click on filters, we can see all activity types, and then we can select any of these options. We can see sent emails, 
document views, meetings, uh, email clicks, and more. So these are different activity feed views that you can manage and view. And then next to that, we have schedule. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, what you want to do is connect your calendar with HubSpot. And all the information on your calendar, your Google Calendar, or your Outlook Calendar will appear down here. So you can stay updated with information. These will be events, tasks, and reminders. Now, what we can also do is navigate over to contacts and then we can select either contacts or companies. So for example, if I select contacts, I can go ahead and select one of these sample contacts and then that's gonna bring up all the information about this record, about this contact. Then I can navigate over to create a task and I can create a task inside of this interface. Again, we have the same options over here, enter the task type, the due date, set reminder, and then the different columns down here, the type, priority, the queue, the grouping, and assigned it to. Then we have the description or notes down here and formatting. Then we can click here and you can see that this task will be associated with this contact automatically. So again, you can create tasks within contacts, as well as if we navigate up to contacts, as well as with companies. Now, if we navigate across to deals over here and click on deals, I can come down and choose a sales pipeline and select a deal that is moving through my sales process. So for example, I can go ahead and click on the sample deal and that's gonna bring up this information up here. I can come down and click on view record and again, that's gonna generate this interface. This is a similar interface that you will see with contacts and companies. And then again, I can navigate up to create a task and create a task for this specific deal. Again, all this information will pop up and you can see that this task is associated with this deal. And you can do the same within tickets. When you create tickets, you can also associate a task with that ticket. So you can see how tasks integrate throughout all of your HubSpot CRM and all the different records, the different activities within your HubSpot CRM. And as you can see, that is how you can get started with tasks inside HubSpot to better manage your CRM related activities as well as other day-to-day -day operational activities. This can eliminate the need to use another task management or project management software. HubSpot can be your all-in-one solution. And there we have it for this HubSpot task management tutorial for beginners. Now, if you have any questions about this tutorial, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel. And that way, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.